Hey you guys, today we are at the Cinnamon Grand attending a press conference hosted by one of the most reclaimed medical universi universities in the world, St. George's University, Grenada. There are quite a few alumni, prospective students as well as faculty members present here today. So let's talk to a few of them and learn more on this. My name is Anisha and you are with Pulse. Right now we are with Mr. Salil Gupta, the Regional Manager for St. George's University. Hi sir, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. So tell me a little bit about the history of SGU. So St. George's University actually started in 1976. We had a first class in 1977. We have uh, 40 year history in medicine education and currently one of the world's biggest medicine school. Over 18,000 grads from St. George's University, from a school of medicine, veterinary medicine, public health. And School of Medicine itself has produced 15,000 graduates practicing in over 50 countries in the world and almost all over the US and all the 50 states in the US. We have grads from under 40 countries across the globe. So we have been placed uh, uh, as currently number one provider for primary care physicians in the US and also fourth largest provider of doctors in the entire US healthcare workforce. So we play a very prominent and vital role in the US healthcare system as well. That sounds so impressive. You, I take it that you have 700 Sri Lankan graduates for now on record. Why, what are we doing here today? Why are we in Sri Lanka? Uh, same thing, we want more students from Sri Lanka, to be honest. And we know the potential of Sri Lankan students performing well in Sri Lanka and across the globe. Uh, they're highly uh, studious, uh, academically wise, very good. And uh, we see a prolonged history with uh, Ministry of Health. We are recognized by Sri Lankan Med uh, Medical Council as well. So we see a good potential among Sri Lankan students uh, on a campus and off towards the campus as well across the globe as a St. George's University alumni. Definitely. And if there is something that you can tell the Sri Lankan prospective students out there why they should join St. George's, what would it be? I would say score well. First of all, in your A-levels, that's very important. That's a thing which stays with your life for the rest of you. And if you're looking to be a doctor, just not a doctor, but rather a global doctor, you should be applying to St. George's University. Go to the admission process and then join for a five-year medicine program. Not many universities would offer a five-year medicine program and options to give you clinicals or hospital training in US or UK. Uh, and affiliations done in US, you have affiliation in the US and UK, so you have a privilege of choosing the country where you can practice medicine. That's the biggest plus point St. George's University. Uh, and the campus is enormous. It's $250 million campus on, you know, in Grenada. And you have options to study in US, UK and Grenada. Then you get global perspective or the medicine education. That's the idea. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much for coming to Sri Lanka today, and I wish you all the very best with uh, recruiting students from this country. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Right now we are with Dr. Bidisi, a faculty member of St. George's University. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you very much. And yourself? I'm great too. So tell me what makes uh, St. George's University unique? Well, St. George's University is a truly international university which provides medical education. International in the sense that it allows for multi countries to be involved as part of the education experience. Students from Sri Lanka, for example, can train in, in the preclinical sciences in Sri Lanka, they can have one year of basic medical sciences in the United Kingdom, another year of basic medical sciences in Grenada, and complete the clinical years in either the United States or in the UK. So as part of your medical education, you can have four separate countries involved in your education. That allows for medical students to be involved in different health systems, different populations, learn about different diseases, different treatments and that allows you to serve as a global physician and in the world in which we live in today physicians do not decide who is their patients you can receive a patient from any part of this world and what more 
training experience to build your competency in having multi countries, multi cultures, multiple experiences to make you a physician. Definitely. And from a faculty member's perspective, what do you think about the uh, education at St. George's and what, how, what kind of things the students will be getting exposed to? Well, as a faculty member, oh, I can indicate that our medical curriculum is very intensive. And that is to ensure that we produce quality physicians. Besides that though, you can receive medical education in many parts of the world. But you cannot receive an education where you have more than 140 countries represented in a student body. So students will learn medicine and they will learn it well. But they also learn about the cultural practices, religious beliefs, different countries that exist on this world. So students will learn cultural competencies, how to be tolerant, how to be a human, and that is critical in being a physician. As much as you're a scientist, you're also an artist. If you can't take a proper history from a patient, understand what is the nature and background of the disease, you're not going to diagnose anything. So you have to be conversive. You have to be able to, to, to build relationships and rapport with people from different parts of the world. And that requires a personal skill set apart from your medical knowledge and, 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 and understanding. So I think that is the main strength where I feel very comfortable when I can sit back and look at my graduates and feel comfortable that they are competent in their medical knowledge but they're also competent to practice medicine anywhere in the world. Definitely sounds incredible. I will, congratulations on how fast and judges have come and I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being in Sri Lanka. Being from the West Indies, um, Sri Lanka is one of my favorite cricket teams. <laughs> And I've grown up with the likes of Jaya Surya Sankara and, um, and I believe from a West Indian perspective we also find friendship with the people of Sri Lanka as well at the same time. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Right now we are with Dr. Atapatu, an alumni member of St. George's. Hi, how are you today? Hello. Tell me about your experience with St. George's. So I was um, one of the uh, first students who joined St. George's in 1990. And uh, uh, there were about 250-300 Sri Lankan students who uh, were entering St. George's as uh, the private medical college in Sri Lanka was closed. And St. George's came down to Sri Lanka and accepted the students. And uh, it was a great experience having uh, international students with the 250 Sri Lankan students at St. George's. And I found that the medical education that you get at St. George's is uh, one of the best uh, that you can get because you have uh, professors coming from different parts of America, from the UK, from Canada uh, during their holidays, vacation periods and giving the lectures, the topics that they do best in whatever universities from Cornell, Harvard and all the other universities and also you find that St. George's has a, a wide range of hospitals throughout the UK and in the US that uh, students could go and do their clinicals and preclinicals and as a doctor who came to Sri Lanka uh, I find that the training that we had at St. George's in Grenada and I did my clinicals in the UK uh, has been of great uh, importance and uh, it has been a great uh, period that I had with St. George's in coming practice in Sri Lanka. Definitely. And in your speech, there were, you said that there were up to 700 Sri Lankan graduates from St. George's at this point. Why, why is it an important thing for more Sri Lankans to go to St. George's and receive their education there? Uh, actually, I think the initial uh, uh, large number of the Sri Lankans who went to St. George's was due to the fact that the private medical was closed and uh, St. George's came to Sri Lanka uh, and uh, s uh, private medical college in Sri Lanka in 1989 was closed and uh, they were looking for universities to take the students and at that time St. George's uh, gave a scholarship to some of the Sri Lankans, part scholarship and a lot of the Sri Lankans went. So that was the initial uh, large number of Sri Lankans who went there and uh, after that of course uh, every year there have been a few Sri Lankans going but the initial number of about four to five hundred students were from private medical college Ragama, the original Ragama campus. 